Hello everyone. Before starting the lesson, try this warm-up. Sort the following functions into two groups. So here I have a list of functions. Just try to sort them into two groups based on whatever criteria you come up with. Pause the video and sort them. Well, you might have sorted them like this, and this would be a good way to sort them. Here we have the functions that have an x term. Here we have the functions that have an x squared term. This is the main difference between uh, the two different types of functions shown here. And we can see in each group there's a function that is the simplest. So in the first group, this is the simplest function. In the second group, this is the simplest function. All the other functions in that group uh, have numbers just added to that simplest version. Here we have x, 3x plus 5, we added in some more numbers. We added in a negative 0.5, we added in a plus 2, a minus 4, and uh, the basic building block is the same for all these functions. And over here, x squared is the simplest function, and we just keep adding terms and coefficients and we get more complex functions, but they're built on the same basic building block. And so that's what we're basically going to talk about in this lesson. It's about parent functions. So we're going to talk about what parent functions are, and we're going to be able to classify functions according to their family, identify the parent function, identify any asymptotes that occur on a graph of a function. Now, some of these words, you might not know what they mean yet, but we will get there as we go through the lesson. Here's a key idea when it comes to functions. Functions that share common characteristics are called a family. Just like if you have siblings, you look similar to your siblings. You share what we call a family resemblance. It's the same thing with functions in math. You can have a graph of lots of different functions, but if they share the same characteristics, they're in the same family. Now, the simplest function in a family is called the parent function. So just like you and your siblings share common family characteristics, and you're in the same family, you both come from the same parent. And it's the same in math when we talk about functions. You can have functions that are in the same family, and they stem from the parent function, the simplest function in that family. For example, here's a graph, and I have one, two, three, four different functions on the same graph. Each function has the same family resemblance. They are all straight lines. So the family is linear. These are all linear functions. Now, the simplest function is the one that's in green here. The equation of that function is y equals x, or in function notation, f of x equals x. Here's another example. Here I have three different functions, three different curves. Each curve is a parabola. If you remember from grade 10, Functions that have a parabola as their shape are quadratic functions. So each of these three functions belongs to the same family. They are quadratic. The simplest function in that family is the green one, y equals x squared. Or in function notation, f of x equals x squared. Now you can write this next part on your summary sheet. I'm going to try to show you all the different parent functions for all the different function types we're going to talk about in this course. Now the first two you've seen already, linear functions, have f of x equals x as their parent function. The simplest function looks like this, a straight line up and to the right. Quadratic functions have x squared as the parent function, and you have a parabola that looks like this. It opens up, 
and its vertex is at the origin, 0, 0. Now the next one, you will see more later in the course. It's called exponential functions. Now you can see in an exponential function, x, or the input of the function, is the exponent on the power. So in the power you have a base, which I've just labeled as b. It could be any number there. But x is the exponent. So it's whatever b is to the exponent x. And when you graph that function, it'll look like this, a curve that seems to be flat and then increases. That flat part, it doesn't actually become a straight line. It approaches the, uh, the x-axis, actually, the line y equals 0. So I put a blue dashed line along the x-axis, which has the equation y equals 0. We're going to talk more about exponential functions later, but the idea is that this is called an asymptote, which we'll talk about later. And uh, the, the curve actually doesn't ever touch that line. It just kind of flattens out and never actually touch and touches it. So if you see a function that has this shape, where it's a curve that kind of is flattened and then increases away from that area, then, uh, then this is an exponential function. But again, we're going to talk more about exponential functions later. The next family is sinusoidal functions. There's two different parent functions, sine x and cosine x. And when we get to the unit on sinusoidal functions, we'll talk more about that. But the parent functions look like this. Notice when it's sine x, the curve goes through the origin, up from there to the right. Cosine, it doesn't go through the origin starts up on the y-axis, then goes down from there. Both of them are repeating uh, patterns. They look like a wave, kind of. So if you see a graph of a function that looks like a wave that repeats over and over again, uh, you can bet the parent function is one of these, sine x or cos x. This next one is called the absolute value. These bars around the x mean the absolute value of x. Now, if you're not sure what absolute value means, I'll do some examples. Basically, think of absolute value as the distance away from 0 on a number line. So if I think about a number line, I've got 0 in the middle. Up, I go to, up to 5, or down here is a negative 5. So the absolute value of 5 is 5, because it's 5 units away from 0. The absolute value of negative 5 is 5, because it's five units away from zero. So absolute value of five is five. The absolute value of negative five is five. Basically what you want to think of this is uh, as the, uh, the number turned positive. Whatever it is, it's now positive. So if you look at the, how the graph looks, well, it's not, it's not x. It's the absolute value of x. So over here, it looks like this parent function. But over here, well, it's been turned positive instead of negative. The y value is now positive instead of negative. So this graph and this graph are very similar. It's just that uh, this one's the absolute value. The reciprocal function, 1 over x, looks like this. That looks crazy. But it has two asymptotes here on the x-axis and here on the y-axis. This curve will never touch the y-axis or the x-axis. It curves away from the x and y axes. Now, why is that? Well, think of what the function is saying. 1 divided by x. So if x is 1, 1 divided by 1 is 1. Here we are. If x is 10, 1 divided by 10. Well, that's really small. That's 0 0.1. So when x is 10 over here, y is really small. When x is really tiny, 1 divided by a really tiny number is going to be a really big number, so it gets bigger. Now, when x is negative, that turns the fraction negative. And so all our y values are negative over here. 
But anyway, if you see a curve that looks like this, then you're dealing with a reciprocal function. And the last kind of function we're going to talk about is the square root function. Now it kind of looks like a sideways parabola, like a quadratic function turned on its side. But it's only showing the positive results because, remember, you can't have any values when x is negative because you can't take the square root of a negative number. So that's why you only end up with positive x values fitting into this function. So if your function looks like half of a parabola turned on its side, you're dealing with a square root function, and you will have a square root sign in your function. Now, these are a lot of different types of functions, different families of functions, but we're going to break it down piece by piece as we go through the course. Our focus will be on just these ones. We're only really going to touch on absolute value, reciprocal, and square root functions in this first unit just to kind of illustrate a few points and to highlight some key terminology. Now, one of those key words as far as uh, our terminology goes is asymptote. And I used this word before. An asymptote is a line that the graph of a function gets closer and closer to but never meets. So here is a reciprocal function. We can see, as we zoom in, this curve gets closer and closer and closer and closer to the y-axis, but it's never actually going to touch it. It does the same thing down here. On this function, x cannot be equal to 0. So we have an asymptote when x equals 0. That's the equation of this vertical line. Now here, on this function, it never actually touches the x-axis. It gets closer and closer and closer, but never actually touches it anywhere. So our function will never be on this line because y will never equal 0 on our function. We will talk more about asymptotes and how to find what they are uh, as we go through the practice questions and uh, through the rest of the unit. So if you have any issues with that, let me know. Otherwise, it's time to practice. So get out your practice sheets and do some work. And when you run into issues, let me know and I'll do my best to help.